Okay guys, this next video, just a quick one. It's how to fix some poor paintwork that's obviously had a previous respray. As you can see, there's no shine on it. There's no reflection. It's really orange peely, but it's also dry as well. It just doesn't look very good at all. Hopefully we're gonna get some shine into it. I'm gonna make it look a thousand times better. You may have this on your car and you want to, have to fix it. It's not going to cost a lot, relatively quick. It's something you could do at home. So, uh, yeah, just watch the video. Let's see if we can get some good results. Okay, first thing we're going to need is a bucket, a little bit of car shampoo, some water. Fifteen hundred wet and dry sandpaper, two thousand wet and dry sandpaper, and possibly some three thousand. So in this video, I'm going to be using a sanding block like this. Uh, Paint Gear sell these in the UK. They come as a sanding block kit. She also has this. This is for good, good for uh, large panels like doors. This one's got a. It's rigid, but it's got a little bit of flex. Again, that's optional. You can do it by hand. As long as you don't press in too hard with your fingers, it should be fine. Also, we're going to need a Buffy machine. This is a cheap one off uh, Amazon. Some polishing compound. First thing I'm going to do is mask off this bit here, which we're not sanding or polishing, and that's just to protect it. Okay, let's get on with the sanding. Okay, so I'm gonna get my 1500 grit wet and dry. That's been soaking in the bucket. Because I'm using a little block, I'm just gonna rip it in half. You can cut it in half to be neater, as long as it fits the block. Make sure the block's nice and wet, and we're just going to try and remove all this texture. It's really important to check the work area regularly. And what you should start to see is some texture appearing. Now all this texture's robbing the bumper of any shine so we're gonna to have to flat this down to get where we need to be if you've not got a block you can do it by hand what you've got to make sure is you don't press your fingers in too hard because it's going to leave marks really important to keep the area wet whenever you're sanding not only does it cut a lot better because it's designed to be wet it also leaves a, a better finish and less chance of damaging the paint you just have to be more careful and cautious around parking sensor areas and when you're sanding it you can even feel the texture with the 1500 grit 
because um, we're literally knocking that back. As I mentioned, while ever that's there, you won't get any shine and it's always going to look like it's had a respray. So you can see where we've been and where we haven't been. Obviously every paint job is different. Um, I don't want to go too far with it, but I'm confident we can knock all this orange peel out. Um, it's it could be described as dry as well. It's not necessarily orange peel, but it doesn't look it doesn't look very appealing. So we're going to sand that and uh, yeah, get all this 1500 grit done first. One thing you've got to be cautious of when you're wet sanding is you don't rub on these edges too much because you don't want to cause a low spot or a burn through. Same down here with the swage line. Um, just be cautious of where you're going with it. And that you can also get your buffer in those areas. Keep checking your work. Obviously this area here, you can see where we've sanded it and where we haven't. I like to alternate sometimes between the block and doing it by hand. Keep checking your work. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we've been over it all with the 1500, wet and dry, soapy water. We've alternated between a little rubber block and doing it completely by hand. So now what we need to do is go over the whole surface again uh, with a lighter grade sandpaper. So we're gonna go over it again, this time with 2000. So the reason why we do this is um, we want to ensure that when we get the buffer on it and the, the polishing compound, we want to ensure that all the sanding marks that we've created, trying to flat the texture out, uh, can be removed, completely removed. Um, most of the time, it does need another stage, i.e. 2000 and also it might be worthwhile using 3000. Obviously, the more grades that you use, the more easier it is to buff away the sanding marks and ultimately a better finish. So we're just doing exactly the same as what we did with the 1500. Keep checking your work, keep doing a bit, checking it, make sure everything's all right. Make sure you're not leaving any texture behind. A bit around the parking sensor. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, I don't usually use 3000, um, but I perhaps recommend that you do. It's just gonna make the, the polishing stage much easier. Exactly the same again. And now what you'll see is 
it feels a lot smoother as you're working up the grades. Keeping it wet at all times, watching them edges. Right, let's wipe that down a bit. Okay, so you can almost see some of the shine coming back um, as you're using the 3000. Personally, I'd go over it more than that. Um, like I say, I'm pretty confident that my buffing combination is gonna remove the 2000 grit. So I was just doing that for demonstration purposes. Um, take your time, there's no rush. The longer you take, ultimately the better it'll look um, so yeah I'm gonna get the rest of this 2000 grit and then uh, we'll move on to the buffing stage okay so we've been over the whole area with 1500 grit then we've been over it with 2000 grit and then I've actually ended up going over it with 3000 grit um, that should be the only sandpaper grades you need you can go 4000 you can go a bit more but I think most half decent polishing compounds can remove you know 3000 grit um, the one I'm using today it's pretty decent at removing um, 2000 grit so obviously it doesn't look very good at the minute um, because it's all dull because it's been sanded but uh, hopefully in a minute you're going to see some some shine getting back into it which is what we wanted so I bought this machine polisher as a backup uh, buffing machine it's a rotary one. Um, I've got a more expensive uh, rotary machine that, well, it broke and then I've replaced it. And in the meantime, I picked this up and it wasn't a lot of money. And I thought, you know, if it breaks after a couple of weeks, a month, it don't really matter. But it's actually ended up surviving um, nearly a year now. So, yeah, I can't really fault it, to be fair. Um, it was off Amazon. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. So, yeah, you don't need expensive tools. Um, nowadays, these cheap rotary polishers, they're, they're pretty decent. So, just thought I'd mention that bit. Okay, so we're going to crack on with the polishing. So, today I'm using Freckler. G360 which is the modern equivalent of the old G3 paste what we all used to use if you was in the trade um, which was good it was just messy so they've they've kind of updated it now and this is this is the system that they use now um, I'll put a link in the description to some polishers uh, compounds so you know they're accessible to everybody nowadays it's not just exclusively to painters and people in the trade anyone can buy you know some of these and they often come in smaller bottles now so again it's not a massive outlay um, and it's just something useful to have in the garage and if you ever need to polish a scratch out or anything or do anything like this um, they're absolutely ideal okay so I've obviously got a polishing pad on there the normally stiff pads uh, you know the less dense they are the more lighter they are at polishing so you want pretty a pretty stiff pad on there again I'll put some links in the description it's all easily accessible nowadays so there's different ways of applying the polish sometimes if I'm being lazy I'll uh, just put a bead on like that and then you know dab it round but um, perhaps recommend what you do which is what detailers do and stuff like you know just get just get some on there Okay, so we're going to start polishing it now with the compound. Um, just use a speed 
Use a low speed at first. Uh, most of these machines now are variable speed, so just keep it low and get a feel for it uh, until you're comfortable. So instantly you can see that's made a hell of a difference. Um, it's gone from completely dull to nice and shiny with plenty of clarity and gloss, which is what you want. I um, probably should mention at this point, I'm using a rotary polisher. If you've got a DA, then that's absolutely fine. You don't often get the same amount of cut from a DA that you do a rotary, which yes, makes it safer. But also, um, you know, it, it can't heat up and as fast as what the rotary does and it just doesn't work in the same manner. It kind of oscillates like that, which makes it a lot safer, as I said. But um, I'd probably definitely recommend using a 3000 grit sandpaper before you're trying to remove the marks with a DA. I just thought I'd point that out at the minute. Um, it might be easier for you if you're a beginner to use a DA. You might already have a DA. This can all be done with a DA, so that's uh, that's worth mentioning. Okay, so I'm just going to polish this area up now. When you're polishing, always keep the buffer moving. Uh, where people hit problems is probably they've kept the polisher on, on one spot, and ultimately that's gonna get red hot, and it could, it could cause a snag on the paint. Uh, and that's obviously, you've, you've, ruined, you've ruined the panel then at that point, it needs respray anyway. So it's always worth, you know, keeping it at a comfortable speed uh, always moving the buffer or DA about so uh, so you don't hit them problems where you know it, it especially with bumpers they tend to get really hot so um, if you're doing it in direct sunlight that's that's not recommendable um, try and do it in the shade keep the buffer moving and keep it at a comfortable speed don't try, try and rush things uh, that's that's when you will hit problems also on these edges you know just be cons obviously be aware that you know it's kind of a weak spot yeah so sometimes it's just worth just tilting the buffer up a bit and keeping it moving a bit quicker uh, just a couple of tips when polishing As you can see, that's looking really good. Um, so much better, so much more clarity. Uh, it doesn't look like it's even been painted now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna to continue to polish the rest of it.
Okay, so just as a finisher, um, it's looking really good at the minute. Uh, and this is optional. You might be happy with how that is, which I am. Um, I'm just going to use a finishing polish. Again, I bought this years ago. It doesn't really matter. There's plenty on the internet. I'll put some links in the description to some um, that you can buy yourself. Again, they come in they come in much smaller bottles nowadays for the DIYer. So that's good. Okay, so just a little bit of that. Often finishing polishes, they spread a lot further. Um, they've obviously got a lot less cut in them, but they have more shine. So uh, they just add a bit of something to the finish, whether it's a new paint job or an old paint job. Um, it'll just stop any swirl marks that have been created. So uh, it's probably a worthwhile, you know, part of the process. But again, some of you may not have uh, have a finishing polish on you. At home. So, uh, you know, we've got a decent finish before that, so you might just happy to leave it at that. But here we go anyway. So as you can see, that's made such a difference. You know, with a few pounds or dollars, if you've already got a buffer or DA, even better. Um, and that's just changed, completely changed the panel. Uh, it's completely changed the finish. You know, it's something that can be done in an hour, two hours, uh, for a very small amount of cost, like I mentioned. Uh, minimal tools, and it's, it's so worth doing. And it, it's, it's completely changed it. So, uh, really happy with that. Um, I think it's a really useful video, useful tutorial. Thanks for watching it.